and to learn more about myself and um very ano naman ako with my decision um at first parang takot ako kasi scary naman parang 8 years more than 8 years na din ako nasa uh guidance ni coach Jamil and um going out of my comfort zone was really um scary for me pero uh take it or leave it eh. so parang ano na lang nilakasan ko na lang talaga yung loob ko and ayun um i decided to ano na to uh, follow my journey sa labas ng f 2 n well, very big step for you talaga, Duki. And alam naman natin na si Coach O, well-known siya for being very persuasive yet sincere when it comes to recruiting his players. Kaya alam nyo, kwentohan nyo naman kami kung ano yung naging pitch niya sa inyo. How did you guys get to play for Choco Mucho? How did he possibly convince you to play for Choco Mucho? Tang, syempre, ikaw unahin namin, no? Kasabayan mo ngayon yung Iron Eagles ni nag-iisang din din Lazaro Revilla. So may hatian ba kayo na, sa defense? Or parang nagiging healthy competition para sa inyong dalawa. Yung totoo, Hatang. <laughs> For me, magiging healthy competition to. Alam naman natin, si Ate Denden, competitive siya. Bibigay ko yung best ko para ma-challenge siya sa akin. And I want to learn new things from her also. Grabe. Alam mo, Bill, parang ito yung pinakaseryoso na nakita ko si Tang. Oo uh, nga. Ang ganda nga, eh, Anyway, um, Billy, ikaw, you prepared a question now yes, for Duki. Yes, I prepared a question for Duki. So I'm going to lead it in first para may context ng konti. And then we're going to flash our question. And Duki, syempre, diba, napaka-solid ng middle blockers nga ng Choco Mucho. Kaya ito nga. So solid middle blockers of Choco Mucho. How do you see yourself fitting in that squad? And syempre, meron pa tayong Madi Madayag who is recovering right now. Um, syempre, ano, uh, challenging siya. And at the same time, uh, I take the challenge then, Kasi parang healthy competition, it's either I get something from them or they get something from me. Yung parang ganong mentality na hindi ko siya tinitake as uh, negative but always uh, positive yung take ko dun. And at the same time, um, excited akong makalaro yung mga bagong players and excited akong makasama sila talaga yun alam mo tang si Duki sinabi niya sa isang interview na na-intimidate daw siya kay Denden na-intimidate ka, ka ba rin kay Denden? <laughs> yes po bakit? <laughs> sana nanonood si Denden kayo para makita uh, oh, oh, parang oh. Ang lakas ng dating niya for me. Oo. Parang no, natatakot ako. <laughs> okay, so Duki, Duki, this one's for you. Are you intimidated by Ted Lazaro? Ah, <laughs> uh, sinabi ko lang yun. Sinabi ko yun na na parang kasi we all know na added then is veteran na dami na experiences playing volleyball and ayon parang given na meron akong nilo look up na senior doon sa team na pupuntahan ko which is Choco Mucho I'm excited to learn more about learn more from her and same with ano um with Ate Jem ayun po And lastly, before we let you guys go, of course, you want to know kung ano yung pwedeng i-expect ng Choco Mucho fans sa inyo. Diba? We always say that na pwede nilang expect na you're gonna give your best. Pero ano yung promise mo talaga sa, sa team na ito or sa fans, sa community? Kasi napakalaki ng fan base ng Choco Mucho Tang. What can they expect from you? What is your promise to them? Um, I will not promise anything, but I will do my best para makuha yung, yung trophy. Yes. Yeah, so Asa straight yan, to the point. <laughs> okay, so ito naman para kay Duki. I had to write it down pa talaga eh. Ah, promise is a chocolate fan. <laughs> Sorry, bakit uh, ang sulat ko? <laughs> ano lang, hi, uh, 
Yeah, let's get along po. <laughs> and thank you for the warm welcome. Uh, wala naman po ako siguro mag-promise. It's just that um, I try to be um, genuine as possible na parang be happy, ma-share ko sa kanya na yung um, positive energy. So, ayun lang. Um, sana, you know, we get along and I love you guys. <laughs> I love it. Uh, a lot of positive vibes there from Duki. Kahit di niya kami marinig. Uh, Tang, Duki, thank you very much. Duki, thank you very much for joining us here on the show. Uh, ang galing eh. Ang galing ni Duki. She found a way to make it work. Ayun, grabe yung pride niya para sa Choco Mucho. Uh, Tang, salamat. Stay healthy, stay safe. We can't wait to see you back on the court again. Thank you. All right. So, who? Ay, hindi, pinalis na natin si Duki. Paano yan, Bill? <laughs> All right, so after the break, we'll have a chat with the returning Mac and Wallace Rosser for the TNT Tropang Giga. Stay tuned. You're watching the game. Well, that was one of the more challenging bodies that we've ever that had to do on the game here. to be honest. Uh, Very oh. stressful. <laughs> that is true, but you know what? Good job for good job to Duki for you know joining yeah, us and uh, making sure that you know we stay that you know that she still found a way to communicate with exactly. you mga choco mucho fans out there. At grabe Bill, kapag kasama ka ni Tang, very ano siya. Very mo, very stiff pa nga interview na yan eh. Pero ado, <laughs> off cam, kung nakikita nyo lang kung paano siya off cam, nako, saya. <laughs> Again, thank you very much to everyone joining us over on Facebook Live. At this point, you want to ch- uh, try out the audio of Matt Conwellis Rosser. Matt, you there? Welcome back to the game. I'm Paolo Del Rosario. The PBA board has officially approved the resumption of the Governor's Cup this February. As excited as we are for the league to come back, one person who's excited to play is a former Catropa who is now returning to the TNT team. After three teams and five championships in total, Matt Gunnels Rosser joins us tonight to talk about his incredible PBA journey. Matt, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me, guys. I uh, really appreciate it. No, no, the pleasure's ours. And, uh, you know, Matt, first off, uh, I want to ask you about the news first that the PBA now is going to come back in February. How excited are you to finally get going and get started, especially through this difficult time? Man, I'm I'm really excited. I'm, you know, for us players, it's hard, you know, stopping and starting and stopping and starting back again so you know hearing the news that we will be able to start in february like that's really really wanted wanted news right now now matt after your stint with terra firma you were a free agent and it's the first time in recent memory that the pba has had an unrestricted free agency so since you're one of the few that really went through that process can you give us an insight on how that whole experience was like for you yeah, you know, first off, I'm just really grateful that I was I had the opportunity to. Uh, and it, it had been in the talks for uh, the last couple of years, you know, it got voted on and I knew my batch was the first batch. So for me, I really lined my contracts up for me to be able to exercise my right. Um, and, you know, it, it's a little bit nerve wracking because, you know, you take you take a leap of faith and you kind of bet on yourself. But, um, you know, I'm grateful that I did it, and I'm grateful uh, to be where I'm at now. 
you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that uh, you ha- you try to line that up a bit to make sure that, you know, you have this period of free agency and getting to choose. And once you actually got there, though, how was testing the market like for you? And how was the whole process of actually talking to the teams and, you know, and reminding people just what you can do and help to win championships? Yeah, um, for me, uh, the process was a little slow at first due to the... Uh, uh, cases going up a lot of teams and a lot of the management actually had cases so you know we kind of I kind of just had to be patient in the beginning um, but you know it, it was actually nice to be able to talk to um, other coaches and uh, uh, and with my agent Charlie D being able to fill out who had some interest in me and where I could possibly end up so um, it all worked out for me to go back to TNT and uh, that, that was like the best part of it. Well, Matt, you've had such a colorful career in the PBA and you've joined teams like San Miguel and Terra Firma. So how would you describe this whole journey of yours in the PBA? Uh, it, it's been exciting, you know, like for me, like I've always uh, bet on trying to be like the most competitive player. And through that, you know, I just want to try to win championships. So being able to like be in be on teams uh, where consistently, you know, we're trying to win and our goal is for a championship. Like I'm blessed to even have that uh, uh, opportunity. So it's it's been an amazing ride and I'm just glad that, you know, I, I'm continuing to go, I'm continuing to play and doing what I love. Well, Matt, you mentioned a while ago that you talked to different coaches trying to figure out uh, where you could fit in with different teams. What set TNT apart? Uh, really, um, for one, the familiar the familiarity there. Uh, you know, I, I was there my from my rookie year on, um, and uh, knowing that uh, I'll be reunited with a lot of like the older guys that are there, and then being able to play under Coach Shot that was like a big factor for me. And then uh, obviously they just won a championship, and they're you know they're contending, and um, they're really um, going up. So for me, it was just like a. Once I got the call that they were interested, I was like, okay, yeah, let's try to get this done because that's a place I really see myself fitting in and really want to be. Now, Matt, aside from playing for Coach Chot and playing with the older guys, your words, not mine, the older guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's old in that sense. <laughs> that was yours. But anything else you were looking forward to in playing for TNT? Are there other certain players that you're excited to play with? Yeah, I'm definitely excited to play with a lot of the new guys, um, especially, you know, Mikey Williams. He's having a great uh, rookie year. Um, I actually never got a chance to play against him. Um, so I was like, you know, it's, I'm going to get to play with this guy. So uh, that's exciting. And hopefully we have fans and being able to play in front of the Talking Text fans. Uh, they've supported me even after I got traded, which is uh, I'm really grateful to them and um, just getting all like the feedback through social media and stuff. I'm I'm really excited to like perform in front of those uh, TNT fans again. Matt, what can we expect from you uh, in your second tour duty with TNT? Uh, man, I'm just gonna be competitive and be me and play my game. You know, th- that's that's really why I went there because they just wanted me to be me and I'm just gonna play and do my best and you know. My, I have five championships. I want five more. And if I could get that here, like, that that would be great. Well, that's a bit greedy of you, Matt. Five more after <laughs> having five already. But you know what? Yeah. I'm here. I'm here for it, Matt. Thank you very much yeah. for joining us. Uh, good luck with your next into TNT. Yeah, Thank you, Matt. appreciate it, guys. Take care. Stay safe. All right. So when we return... We'll go one-on-one with one championships like in Queen, Denise Zambuanga, as we find out what's next for her in one championships at some weight division. Stay tuned. You're watching the game. Hello, everyone. So watching the game here, that was Matt and Wells Rosser talking about his move to the TNT Tropang Giga ahead after the unrestricted free agency period uh, in the PBA. He talked about being one of the ones to actually take advantage of your opportunity. And he actually said that he lined up his contract to make sure that this period in particular 
was one that he could actually take advantage of. And then, of course, uh, up next, we have si Denise Zamboanga, who is in that one atom weight division, a very competitive division. Uh, we all know her for her big fight last time around that uh, ended up in a loss that was uh, quite controversial. Shemper, we're going to have her thoughts on that and find out what the future plans are for the Lycan Queen. And, uh, of course, I'm still by Billy Capistrano. And uh, for anything you like about the show, you can tweet Billy at Billy Capis. And everything you like about the show, you can tweet at me at Paul Del Rosario. So, ayun, that's how we do it. Uh, we'll be back in just a bit. Welcome back. You're watching the game. I'm Paolo De Rosario. One Championships, Denise Zamboanga continues to be one of the top names in one's atom weight division. 
The Lycan Queen herself joins us tonight to share what's next on the horizon. Denise, welcome to the game. If I'm not mistaken, nasa Bangkok ka ngayon uh, in quarantine. And uh, at the moment first, uh, Denise, uh, we have to go back to what happened last time around. Siyempre, that fight against Sohi Ham, grabe yung controversy doon. Uh, your thoughts about yung entire process, yung, uh, the fact that there was they may review and hindi na overturn yung result. Parang ang dami nangyari. Um, I think I've posted already about my disappointment on my last fight on my social media. I really respect Ham and One Championship because as an athlete, kailangan mo respetuhin kasi wala di naman nila di naman kasalanan ng opponent ko na yung decision ng ng officials pero masakit para sa akin until now kasi para sa akin until now ako yung para sa akin ako yung nanalo ng laban na yan. Niisip ko yung mga trainings na ginawa ko during my fight camp, yung mga effort ng coaches and ng mga teammates ko. Pero moving forward, um, tuloy pa rin yung buhay and I cannot stay on that issue. Very well said, Denise. Now, ano yung mga pinaka-importanteng natutunan mo galing sa match na yon? And can we expect a rematch with Sohi Samsun? <laughs> I have a lot of lessons learned about that match up with that match up. For me, my biggest lessons that I've learned, I think I should have finished her ng maaga and sana hindi ko dinaan sa sa decision yung laban. Pero I'm still thankful na na binigyan ako ng opportunity ng one championship to join the biggest show ng one championship which is one X. Sobrang grateful ako na binigyan nila ako ng chance to prove myself. Sorry, is that you confirming, Denise, na magkaka-rematch ka with uh, Ham Sohi? Yes po. <laughs> Ayun. Sorry ah. Medyo, medyo napaisip ako dun eh. So, there you have it, folks. Uh, Denise Zamboanga will have a rematch with Sohi Ham. Ah. Uh, Ham, uh, Ham Sohi soon um, at 1X. And syempre... You mentioned the lessons learned from it. How excited were you, Denise, nung nalaman mo na makaka-rematch ka? Sobrang excited ako kasi syempre, ano yun eh, opportunity yun na ma-prove ko talaga na ako talaga yung nanalo. Now, Denise, without giving away too much of your game, syempre lahat kami na excite na meron na namang rematch. Ano yung pwede namin i-expect sa'yo sa, sa rematch na ito? Paano mo babaguhin yung approach mo this time around? Or kung may babaguhin ka man? Um, I think people will expect um, a new level up, Denise Sambuanga. Expect a finish and I'm gonna raise our flag. Grabe yun. Expect to finish, gonna raise our flag. Uh, honestly, I'm very excited to see it. Grabe, action packed din yung laban yung last time around. And uh, of course, ha, may plano ka na ba in terms of uh, yung kampo mo going into this one? Uh, how, how, how are you going to manage yung training period na Especially ngayon na medyo up and down yung uh, cases natin and in terms of the pandemic, how is your preparation going to be like? Um, the preparations, ano lang naman, basic. And then, gonna focus lang yung mga, mga mistake na ginawa ko nung last fight ko with, with her. So, ganun pa rin naman. We will have a really, for this time, really have a best game plan for for Ham. Now, Denise, na mentioned mo nga yung, yung rematch mo sa 1X Championship. And it's really such a big event. So, how does it feel to be the first Pinoy to be announced as part of such a historic event? Actually, yung mabigyan lang ako ng rematch kay Ham, masaya na ako. Paano pa nung nalaman ko na kasali ako sa one of the biggest or biggest show ng One Championship, which is One Next. Sobra, sobra grabe excitement, sobrang saya and nakaka-proud as Pinoy na ma-represent ko yung Philippines sa biggest show. Tapos kasama ko pa yung mga biggest athlete na tinitingala ko. Alam mo, grabe talaga, uh, Denise. Very excited for you. And of course, thank you very much for coming on the show. Um, really a big pleasure having you here. And thank you very much for telling us and revealing here on the game that the mm-hmm. rematch that everyone's been wanting is finally going to happen. There you have it. Watch out for Denise Zamboanga and the rest of the 1X card. They'll have multiple titles and super fights across the board. We cannot wait for it. That will be on March 26. Denise, salamat ulit.
thank, thank you. you Paul. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for joining us. I'm Billy Capistrano. Catch us weeknights here on One News, One Sports, and One Sports Plus. I'm Paolo Del Rosario, and this has been The Game. Thank you.